I'll go over the um, kind of the basic steps for getting um, this image with a basic color scheme on it. Okay. Uh, all right, everything's working. Okay. Um, so here's my pencil drawing here. That all that pencil is on one layer. I have the frame on another layer. Um, always make sure you lock layers that you're done with. So I'm done with that pencil drawing. Um, so I'll just lock that. And if I need to change it later, I can unlock it and do that. Um, so I'm going to make a new layer underneath the pencil drawing layer. So here's pencil. Underneath that, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to call that flat color. Um, the reason it's called flat color is you put all your initial colors down first. And then if you want to add shadows um, or anything like that later on, that will be done on another layer. Shadows or highlights or gradients, anything like that. Um, but flat color is going to be the most important for just getting the overall color scheme and then just coloring um, all the individual shapes. Um, let's see here. I'm going to turn off that frame for now. We can kind of turn that on and off as we work. So basically what I want to do is I want to think about what I want my color scheme to be. Um, so this is a action-oriented moment. So I kind of want a few more saturated colors in there. I can kind of just, so I'm going to start out with some uh, blues of various saturations and various values. And I think I want to do a um, complementary color scheme. So the complement color of blue is orange. And usually complementary color schemes will be a little bit more exciting because they contrast so nicely. And so I can just keep these little bits of colors there on the side of my canvas as I'm working. So the biggest thing you want to do, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, actually. So I just hit crop there, the letter C, and I can make my canvas bigger. Uh, I want some white there. Okay. Oops. No, that's okay. Move that all off. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of the white. So I'm just going to uh, put down, oops, I want my rectangular marquee tool. I want to just put down one color there first. Oops, I want that to color everything, cover everything, obviously. All right, so we see right here there's a little bit of white. So that's actually on this pencil drawing layer. So notice when I turn that off, that white disappears. Um, so to get rid of that, I either had to go back in here with my eraser and erase that. So rather than um, erasing my line work, I accidentally put down white. I'm just going in to erase that little bit of white there. Okay. So now I'll relock that layer. All right. So now what you want to do is just go in and start selecting different shapes. So that's just using your lasso tool um, or the polygonal lasso tool. So I, I might use this one because I got some straight edge buildings there, but I'll start with the lasso tool. So I basically just want to select all these major shapes here. And you really don't need to be super perfect on this first pass. Uh, you can always fix and correct and make things a little neater and cleaner later on. So I'm going to kind of just separate. Usually if I have sky in a scene, um, or I kind of just want to separate the negative space from the positive space. So I'm going to select all the buildings and the guy here. Just so I can separate those two main areas of positive space and negative space. All right, so getting rid of that, um, getting rid of the white there should help you to. Um, you don't want to color this like a color book, so coloring book. So remember, color for mood. So I'm not going to come in and be like, okay, the skin is peach, the shirt is a blue, 
the pants are a darker blue. Okay, that's not how I want to color this. I want to color this thinking about maintaining good value relationships and maintaining that overall color scheme of orange and blue. So once I selected the positive space, what I'm going to go and then go to image adjustments, hue saturation. Okay, so that's also uh, control U on Windows or command U on Mac. And I want to just darken this up. Uh, I don't want it to change that white right there, so I'm just going to switch to my um, magic wand tool. And right now, the magic wand tool has a little plus symbol by it. If I hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, it changes to a minus symbol, so I want to take away that little bit of selection. So I just took away that white section. All right, now I'm going to go back to Image, Adjustments, Hue, Saturation. You could also do Command U for that. I just want to darken that. And then to deselect it, Command D. All right, so now I kind of just have these major shapes um, separated in here. And the reason I do that is because I'm just darkening the color. I'm not, um, I'm not adjusting the hue or the saturation at this point. That will come later on. Because you want to uh, have your values. Make sure your values are working as well. I'm just kind of uh, touching up little bits right here. Some people have a cool style where they uh, go outside the lines a lot. Some people have a style where it's a lot more, you know, very exact and perfect, longer line work. You'll kind of discover what's better. And these aren't, um, this project is not intended to be super finished, polished illustrations. It's more to just play around with the creative process and see what sort of, um, color schemes you can come up with. All right, so now I'm going to select this orange area because I want to change the color of the sun and the clouds as well. So I'm going to select that. So now all my orange is selected and I want to just color the sun brighter. So I'm going to select that color, hold option, um, select that and just make this a brighter orange. I'm going to make my Um, my brush here bigger. I can do this by clicking and dragging. If I hold control and option, that does it. It's probably control and alt on Windows would be my guess. Then I can pull it side to side to make it bigger or smaller. A little bit smaller. There we go. And for the clouds, I could do this a couple different ways. I could come in with my lasso tool, draw right around here. Now, obviously, I, I don't want that brown to change color of the building, so I'll switch to the magic wand, hold the option to get a minus, and get rid of that. Now I can hit Command U, which is the same as image adjustments, hue saturation. Command U, make these a little bit lighter, and let's just see what happens if we adjust the saturation of these. Maybe the hue just slightly. So if I do want to adjust the hue, I don't want to make big changes in my hue. Just slight changes. I'm just going to make them slightly more pink. Maybe that's too much, but I like that a little bit. That's not quite changing enough for me. Let's there we go. Now they stand out enough. Okay. Um, I will do the same thing with these ones now that I got that color figured out. I'll get rid of that brown part, magic wand, and subtract. Now I'll just switch to my brush tool, hold option, suck up that kind of orangish pinkish color color in those two other clouds. All right. Um, so our skateboarder here, the guy, put my frame back on there to kind of see how it's looking. 
Um, the guy is our focal point, so we already have a good light-dark contrast there. We have his dark hair against the light sun. Um, but what happens if we come and put a blue color on him? So remember, don't worry about coloring for reality. I want him to be a nice saturated color to stand out from that orange background. Oh, the board should also be a nice bright color. So orange and blue is always a nice color scheme. Uh, the, you'll see this a lot in different movies and illustrations where they use orange and blue together. Okay. Ah, now that guy pops out of the background. Now let's, what do I want to do with these buildings? Um, I want to maintain their their value, but what if I change it to a dark bluish color, a dark desaturated blue? So I'm going to choose a blue from over here. And I think that we want that darker. There, that looks cool. Okay, if I had this as a brighter saturated blue, that would probably be too much. It's too saturated and it takes away from the saturation of the character. So I think that works there. And if I want to just fine tune it and adjust it, I can select that blue I just changed it to, hit Command U, kind of make some subtle little adjustments here and just see what's working best. If you have big areas, the more they get, if you have too much saturation, it will um, be overwhelming to that viewer. I think something kind of like that is good. All right, so let's get into the guy here. So. Um, I really do not care if people are really blue in real life. I think it works for this um, this character in this illustration. So I'm going to select that blue. And usually you just want to think about values. So usually skin is going to be a little bit um, lighter than the hair. So I'll just lighten up that skin a little bit. Now you think about other values. So let's give them some dark pants. And I made it a little bit more desaturated, so it's not quite as bright. Um, come here, fine tune a little bit. Let's get some almost uh, white socks. The shirt, what do we want to do? Yeah, probably something like that. So I'm just going in and selecting these different shapes with the magic wand tool. So I'm just switching to W, changing, um, changing, or selecting the different colors I've already drawn out. Uh, let's see if I can adjust the skin a little bit. It looks a little too unnatural. Let's desaturate a little bit. There we go. So skin is, all skin colors are usually pretty des desaturated. From lighter skin to darker skin, it's rare that it's going to be a very saturated color. Sometimes the shadows will get more saturated, but overall, um, overall skin is usually going to be a desaturated color. So you can save more saturated colors for clothes. Uh, you can even play around with hair a little bit. I think I'll make these shoes a little darker. So I'm just adjusting the lightness and darkness of different things. I just want to cover up this a little bit when I put my friend wear on. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. So sim uh, regularly zoom out from your drawing too. That allows you to judge it a little bit better. Um, but you want to build it up all evenly. You don't want to... Um, on the wrong layer there. Magic wand, select all this dark blue. Um, you don't want to just like color the entire character and leave the background untouched. I don't want to just start coloring uh, all um, one building and leave everything else untouched. Um, I'm just making these stairs a little bit darker. That will cause them to come forward. Um, now what I'm thinking, I want to make the this section of the buildings down here, kind of these silhouette buildings, I want to make them feel a little further away. So I'm going to do 
a little a little something to them. Um, so I want to isolate just these sections of the buildings. So I selected all of this darker blue. You can see it easier with the uh, frame layer off. Now I'm going to use my lasso tool and hold Option so it takes away certain sections. So I want to take away that building. Take away this building. Will I even see that foreground? I won't even see that foreground. Uh, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to suck up the color of the sky, that orange, and I want to drop just a little bit of that sky color into this building. So let's lighten this building actually just a little bit so it's a little further away. Oh, I missed part of it. There. Uh, I'm going to lighten it a little bit. I'm going to drop just a little bit of this orange, so suck up that orange. Hold Alt or Option or Alt on uh, Windows, suck that up. And I'm switched to my paint bucket tool here. G is the shortcut for that. And I'm going to turn down this opacity a whole bunch. And just drop a little bit of that orange into the that blue. I'm going to turn this down even more. So that kind of will cause the um, buildings to blend with the color of that sky. Okay, how's that looking? Control D. That's looking pretty good. Let's um, bump up the saturation of this board here. Okay. This is coming along pretty well. I can go in and just make these windows either lighter or darker. Kind of get a good little pattern going on this building. But um, overall, just always try and color for mood. So it, your work will look more sophisticated, more interesting if you don't worry about what... Um, colors would look like in reality. Uh, let's just add some little uh, patterns on this board. Maybe just a little design or something. Mm, that looks kind of weird. Maybe as if um, there's a picture on here. There we go. That's kind of okay, I guess. Change, make those wheels a little lighter. Uh, another good thing to do is throw an adjustment layer on here, on top. Oops, Control-Z. Uh, so these are all your adjustment layers. Oops. Um, and the one I like to use is Hue Saturation. So basically what these layers do is it allows you to make uh, adjustments to your drawings that are not permanent. Okay, so I want to see what this looks like as a black and white image. So I'm going to turn this all the way down. To completely desaturate, so that means it's now a uh, just a value image, a black and white image. So this layer is just sitting on top. So I can turn this on and off. And basically, what I want to do is, as I'm working on this, I don't want to lose track of my values. So if the image works as a black and white image, then it is going to work as a color image. So I can look at this, and oh, I still have good dark values on my focal point, light value behind the focal point. Uh, I have separation of all the shapes of the foreground, um, stairs, the middle ground buildings, the background silhouette buildings, things like that. So I just kind of turn this on and off as I'm working. So this is basically all my um, flat colors here. Um, you can, but you don't have to, go in and like clean this up, make sure this is like all right inside the lines. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I would rather you all have... Um, good, interesting color schemes that are expressing the mood of your story um, rather than a perfectly colored in image. And then I'll just again flip this regularly as I am working. Alright, now let's say you did want to add some shadows on here. 
Um, I'll just show you. I'll start to do that a little bit. We'll get into more kind of how to add shadows um, as we prep for that final project, but I'll just introduce it here. Um, basically, what you want to do is just have all your flat colors on one layer and the shadows on another layer as well. So, um, if I'm going to say, let's just say my flat colors are done, I will lock that, make a new layer, call it shadows. Now, I just got to go back and forth between these two layers. So, go to flat color and select a section I want to add shadows to. So, with that magic wand tool, select the shirt. Then go back up to shadows layer and add in shadows. So the way you want to add shadows, um, just keep your opacity at 100. Don't try and render those shadows. Um, don't try and slowly build them up. Just put one flat color down for that shadow. And the easiest way to do that is just select this color and just make it, just make the value a little bit darker. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of thinking that the sun is casting some shadows. So on the side opposite of that sun, you'll get some shadow shapes in there. We'll get into more about uh, kind of varieties of shadow colors and kind of how to do that. But for the most part, just for this project um, and for now, err on the side of simplicity. So I'm going to select that skin color, make it a little bit darker, and add that in there. So we'll get into this, I think, next class when we talk about figure drawing, kind of just how to add shadows. But there's typical shadow patterns that you can expect um, with standard kind of above lighting. And again, you don't need to add shadows like this everywhere. Um, more on your focal point. So I won't really need to add too many shadows on um, like the buildings in the background. I can. So you don't always need to select that for smaller things, like just putting it quickly on the socks. I can just do it on there. But when I do, when I had when I select the flat color, it just makes sure I'm not going to color anywhere else. Um, maybe I want some on the stairs. So things closer to you, you will see more shadows on. So let's see, make that a little more dramatically darker. There we go. Okay, and maybe we have just a little bit on these clouds. Um, but as I do this, especially on these clouds, because they're so far away, I do not want to come in and put like a really dark shadow on there. Okay, I just want it to be slightly darker. Subtle. Subtlety is the key when adding in those shadows. Um, and I will just show you guys a basic use of gradient here. So I want to select all that orange. Because all the orange isn't touching, I have to click it multiple times. If I don't want to do that, I can um, uncheck this box. And it will just automatically select all of um, a single color. Um, so let's use this gradient tool. Um, actually, maybe we want a radial gradient. So this one here, we want to come there. And this will radiate outwards. And here you can select. Um, different types of gradients. So usually I just use this one where it goes from color to um, transparent. Okay, that is way too much. So I got to turn this opacity way down. There we go. So that's probably good for these. They don't need a whole lot more details. We'll get into in the future projects, adding in highlights, blending some shadows, making more complex, complex shadow colors. But for this project, I want to see good overall color schemes to help tell the story from those um, thumbnail storyboards that you guys choose to color.